When we talk about search engines, it's easy enough to think of just the big ones, like Google.com. And sometimes we forget that there are other websites that are considered search engines. YouTube is another one, and even Google Maps. People like me search on Google Maps just to find locations near them and even to get more information about those local businesses. And sometimes we'll go directly to those locations from an ad without even clicking on them. If you want to try to drive more foot traffic in your local business, you should make sure that your search campaigns are optimized to show on Google Maps. That's exactly what we'll talk about. We'll go over the four main ways that you should be optimizing your search campaigns in order to be eligible for Google Maps. And then once those assets are live, we will show you how to review some performance metrics with a few features within Google Ads. Before we jump into Google Ads, I wanted to start in Google Maps to show you what ads on this platform could look like. Because as I said in the intro, Google Maps is also a search engine. So I'm just going to type in something. You see, I searched for car repair. And already we see some sponsored ads here. Now I'm not going to show you the view from a mobile device, but they're not going to get this huge search bar right away. Look at the red icons on the map. If I hover over one of the circle ones, it's just a basic listing. This is organic. I can still get directions, look at reviews, check hours, save the location. But if I go to one of the square icons, we see this one is sponsored. And I can still click on all the organic actions. But here's the additional part with an ad, headline, description. Notice how it's cut off a little bit. But then there's the call to action to visit the website. I'm going to be nice, not click on it. But you can see if you're a local business and people are searching for something within a specific area, why you want to show up on Google Maps. I can only speak for myself, but I assume there's a lot of others that also just type in generic searches, knowing that Google is going to show me a variety of options in the area I'm currently located in. That's why this is so valuable. So now that we see how ads could appear on Google Maps, let's talk about what you need to set up in order to ensure that your ads appear on Google Maps. The first step would be to set up or update your Google Business Profile. I'm not going to paste the URL. It's easy enough just to go to Google and search Google Business Profile. Michelle and I don't have a brick and mortar location. I don't even know if we have this set up, but I'm going to see how far we can get. But notice this section right here. Google's telling us this is necessary in order to users to find you on Google Maps. So I'll just add in my name and business category, and then I'll click next. Do you want to add a location customers can visit like a store or office? Yes. Here we will see we can add our address. That's what's going to show up within any of the local search ads. Do we provide deliveries? No. Add in our phone number and website. This is optional. I'm going to skip it for now. We have call extensions. And no, we don't need alerts. Now it says we're verified. I'll click next. We'll go ahead, add the rest of our services later. I'm going to skip this. Add in our hours. I'm going to skip it for now. Skip this too. And then once we're verified, we should be good to go. Odds are Michelle and I are not going to get verified because we don't actually have a location. So here's what we have. It's not verified. This is probably going to be rejected. Notice we have to wait five days, but let's assume everything is great. You got accepted. Cool. First step is done. Now we can go into Google ads. Once your business profile is saved and verified, we can come back into Google ads. Let's head on over to tools and then we can go to data manager here. We're in connected products. If you haven't done so already, let's go to connect product. Let's see if it pops up right away. There it is. Google business profile. Usually all the Google ones are going to show up first, but for whatever reason, if you're not seeing it, you can just search for a Google business profile. And then you'd search for the business profile here. It's searching it by email. So I have to blur it out. I'm going to click next and then let's link it. Now it says our locations are linked. I click done, done again. And here we see confirmed it's linked. So now if we click on campaigns, head on down to assets, I want to make sure we're looking at our location assets, formerly known as location extensions. Ignore this. These are what we used for our older video on affiliate location extensions. That's if you sell your products at other stores and you don't actually have a brick and mortar location. If you are interested in that, you could check out that video here. But then I would create a new asset by clicking on the blue plus button. Now, since my business isn't approved, my business profile isn't showing up here, but you would be able to find your Google business profile, select on it and pull over the locations that you have, whether you have one location or multiple locations all within the same Google business profile. Since Michelle and I can't show you that, I'm going to hop into another account so you can see what it looks like. Here for this account, we see the business profile. It has all locations selected, so they're all pulling over as individual location assets. Okay, so we have our business profile set up. It's linked to Google Ads. We've imported or created location assets. 
Another thing that you want to do to show your ads on Google Maps is to make sure that you're using these locations for your campaign targeting. For this account, I already have another tab open. And for this example, the account has one location in New York City. You can see we're calling it out in the campaign. So when we go to location targeting, ignore the exclusions, but we're keeping our location targeting very close to where this location is. Now you're saying, okay, 50 miles around New York City, but you have to think it's New York City. It's one of the biggest cities in the world. There's a lot of tours from all over the area that will travel and come here. Think of the example on Google Maps. If you are a car repair shop in the suburb somewhere in some city, and there's a bunch of other car shops all around, you know people aren't gonna travel 15, 20, 30 miles to see you, then yes. You wanna make sure that you're narrowing your targeting to fit how far you think your users would actually drive to visit your location. Because any local search ad on Google Maps, I tend to think more about this from the mobile experience than anything else. But when you keep your location targeting pretty focused, it increases your chances for appearing on Google Maps. And the fourth recommendation from Google to better help you appear on Google Maps is to optimize your keywords. No need for me to jump into an ad group and show you. you. Probably know what that is already. Targeting keywords related to your business and adding local qualifiers to it. So if you already have the location targeting set, sure, add those near me type keywords to it. Or car repair location name. Calling out the specific area that you serve within the keywords that you're targeting. That's another signal to Google where your business is located in addition to linking your Google business profile. Now, after all that's set and you're running ads for a while, there are a few ways that you can review performance on these local searches. That's because users have several actions that they can perform when reviewing your ad on Google Maps. We saw it in the first example at the very beginning of this video. Besides clicking on the call to action button, users can look at location information. They can get directions. If you've added phone number, if you've added phone number information to your Google business profile, or a call extension, users can potentially click to call if they're on a mobile device. So whether you're looking at the campaign, ad group, ads, or down below the keywords report, you can review click history information. If you're in one of those four views, go to segment and then choose click type. Scrolling down a little bit, just so we can see it for a few different campaigns, you can review information for mobile clicks to call. Understand this can go beyond just Google Maps, but the other two don't. Driving directions, how many times people are clicking from the ad to get driving directions, and then get location details. So yes, they may not visit your landing page, but this shows other engagement signals on how users are interacting with your local search ads. Sometimes, depending on what service you have, people don't need to visit your landing page. They just wanna find out where you are, and then they potentially can go straight to your location. I don't need to visit a landing page for a gas station. I'm just looking for the closest gas station. I go to FedEx a lot for kids school, my personal hobbies. I don't need to visit a FedEx landing page. I just want to know where the closest one is to me, where I'm at at that moment. You're still driving business, even though it may not be trackable within Google ads. So that's why some of these other engagements are important to look at. And then last, once you do have your location assets, Google will start tracking store visit conversions for you. You know how we segmented by click type, you can also segment by conversion actions. And if you left it as a primary action, you'll start to see store visits within your campaigns too, if you have enough information. I'm not gonna get into store visits a ton because I've always questioned the accuracy of this goal. Does someone actually go into my store or did they just drive by it? But I did wanna talk about it briefly in this video. So those are the main things that you need to do to get your search ads ready for Google Maps. Hopefully you see an uplift in foot traffic. And as always, yes, we get metrics to review in Google ads. Sometimes those metrics looking at just conversions don't tell the whole story. I'm just recapping what I said and that in many cases, people may not need to visit your website from an ad to go to your location. So try to notice if once you realize that you're set up for ads on Google Maps, if you just see an overall uptick in traffic and foot traffic coming to your store. If you have any other questions about search ads on Google Maps, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.